Paneer or Indian cheese is one of those ingredients that I get asked about all the time. I like to make mine fresh at home um, just because I think it tastes so much better than the stuff that you can buy. But, you know, it's not bad, that stuff, so you can always buy it if you want to. I like to make mine. I'm just going to show you how to do that. First thing you need to do is buy some whole milk. Um, I've got the biggest tub of milk you've ever seen here just because I know I'm feeding quite a few people later on. Um, so what you need to do is make sure you've got a nice big pan and all you want to do is bring your milk to temperature. So just pour that in. And in terms of the process, it's really, really quite simple. And when I talk people through how you make paneer, they're actually a little bit surprised because is, is that it? Is that all you need to do? So all we want to do is just bring our milk just up to boiling point. And just as it gets to boiling point, I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to add into this quantity of milk about four tablespoons of vinegar. Um, you can use vinegar, you can use lemon juice if you want to. And all that will happen is that the milk will curdle. And we then need to sieve that through a muslin and just squeeze out any of the whey that's in there. And that essentially is your paneer. So it's really nice, really simple to make. But in Indian cooking, you use paneer in lots of different ways. It's used in puddings, it's used on, you know, as a tandoori ingredient, it's used in um, cooked with sarg, it's cooked in a butter sauce. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can use paneer. Keep an eye on your milk because you don't want it to boil over and it's one of those things that you sit there, watch it for ages, nothing happens and all of a sudden it will boil over. Um, make sure you give it a stir every now and again as well because you don't want the milk to catch on the bottom of the pan. I can tell it's just going to come to the boil because it's got really nice and frothy. So I'm going to keep stirring it and this is the bit that you need to make sure that you keep an eye on it because it will just all of a sudden just go. So just as it gets to that bubbling, that boiling, I'm just going to turn it off. Let's cool it down a bit and I'm going to add my vinegar. I like to use a white vinegar just because I want my paneer to be nice and white. Um, so, and just look at the, look at what happens. So I put a three in, I'm going to give it a stir and then I'm going to just see if I need to add any more in. I can see it's starting to curl. You can see those little lumps forming, look. But I know that that's not enough vinegar because it hasn't all separated out. I'm gonna put another one in. Let's get my spoon. So you know you've added enough vinegar when you get a clear separation of the curds and the whey. All the curd has come together in this lovely lumpy, almost cottage cheese look, but you get a clear liquid. I'm just going to leave this for a few minutes for everything to come together. Whilst that's doing its thing, I'm going to get um, the next bit ready. Um, what I'm going to do is sieve all of this through a muslin cloth and I just use um, baby muslin that you can get from any baby accessory shop. Um, so I just want to line my colander with the muslin and I'm going to take this with a smaller pan that I'm going to sieve into because I want to keep some of the stock that comes out of that because I like to use that when I make other dishes. Um, I'm going to take that over to the sink and just pour it through and then squeeze all the excess liquid out um, and then I'm going to place it between two plates and put a weight on top so any liquid comes out. I'm going to leave it a minimum of an hour. My paneer has been setting for about two hours now so I'm just going to have a look and see that it's hopefully set beautifully. There we go. I'm just going to take it off the muslin pop it onto my board. So that's the texture that we're looking for. You can see it's beautifully crumbly. And we use paneer in lots of different ways. Um, 
Sometimes we chop it up into cubes and then fry it and use it in different dishes. Sometimes I'll chop it up and just use it like this if I'm making sag paneer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop it up into nice big chunky cubes. And I can show you the texture that it is inside. It's very delicate, so be gentle with it. That's what you're looking for. It's quite solid, you see, in the middle. So then just chop it into lovely big chunks. And that's the texture that we're looking for. It's quite firm in the middle, but it's it's got almost like a springy softness to it. Paneer is all about texture and it's all about the sauce or the marinade that you put with it. I've got loads of ideas on my website on how you can use your homemade paneer.